Assalamualaikum and welcome back to another video by Sir Shazwan Today we'll be looking at the next chapter in ELC 501 which is making inferences and drawing conclusion So these two skills are very important in critical reading as you will be you will be asked to try to come up with inferences and drawing conclusion So throughout this lecture we'll be looking at what are inferences what are conclusions how to how do you do those things those inferences and conclusion what you need to pay attention to as well as the skills and the tips for you to do this so without further ado let's move into the lecture so for the learning outcomes at the end of the chapter you should be able to make inferences okay and then you will be able to draw conclusions we'll be looking at the tips and tricks as well as what do you need to know when you want to come up with inferences and conclusions right so the first part good readers make inferences and draw conclusions as they read this is part of the critical skills uh, thinking uh, reading skills uh, and it tests your abilities on how you can come up with those right. so these are important skills for understanding a reading test a text as authors often imply themes and ideas without stating them directly they might uh, remove some details or they might not include some details because they assume that you might be able to understand it by the way they write the text so an inference what is an inference an inference is a logical conclusion that is made up based on observation or assumed facts it is based on what you can come up with based on the given uh, uh, text okay so a conclusion on the other hand is drawn as a next step after giving thoughtful consideration to what has been read right so that is uh, the difference between inferences and conclusion those two they are similar but at the same time they focus on different things so let's look at how to make inferences so when readers make an inference, they try to understand what the text is all about by using clues uh, from the text and also from their prior knowledge, personal beliefs, experiences, and assumptions. So whenever you want to make your uh, inference, whenever you read the text, it will relate with what you already know from the uh, uh, previously, from your own beliefs, your own experience, and what you assume in life as well as you relate it with the clues that the text give you the author leave left some clues in the text so that they will be able to make the lead uh, what we say the readers understand what they are trying to tell in the uh, text okay so an inference is a mental process in which uh, which we reach a conclusion based on specific evidence it is often described as reading between the lines uh, for example looking for or discovering a meaning that is implied rather than explicitly stated oxford Dictionary, 2016 so it means that whenever you talk about reading between the lines sometimes people they don't want to be direct when they are talking they just want to be like beating around the bush they are just not they don't want to, they want to be blunt when they want to because they think that when they are being blunt they will uh what we say cause the person to be hurt you don't want to hurt the other people so they are being uh what we say they don't they don't be direct so whenever uh, they can be in the form of speaking and reading for so for this one when you try to read between the lines you try to find the implied meaning okay of the text rather than what has been stated so readers find clues in the form of facts or other supporting details to infer from in the reading text the clues are in the text and then from other details and what you already know those can be used to infer something thus, thus remember an inference must be a logically derived statement from the available information it must be from what the information is available okay for example this one john hears his post box closing so whenever you hear something like that 
you try to make it into your own experience like what we have mentioned earlier okay for example you hear your post box your post box closing tuk something like that okay what can you assume from that is that the postman it has arrived with mail for him so there's no one else that we will open your post box and put things in it okay it always will be the postman so that with that information that you have read and as well as your own personal experience or what you have experienced before you can make an inference something like this okay so whenever you hear a post box closing you know the postman has arrived with mail okay second one betty sees cake crumbs on the floor and around her daughter's mouth okay cake crumbs on the floor there are some cake crumbs there and then her daughter's mouth there's are there are some cake crumbs as well so what you can uh, infer from that is that betty's daughter has eaten the cake so that is what you can assume you are trying to be like a detective you want to try to look for the clues and then you are trying to find out what are the what inform in underlying information that you can find from the given text okay the third one larry returned from the mall to find his room enveloped in smoke and there were some burnt papers on the floor so what you can infer someone has burnt the papers in larry's room when he was away so the clues when he returned from the mall he's not home okay and then when he's not home there is smoke and then some burnt paper so you can assume that someone else has burnt the papers and larry is away the next one a woman walks into the school completely soaked and it is raining so what you can assume or what you can infer there she does not have an umbrella the fourth uh, the fifth one he ate a pasta and made a disgusted face so what you can infer the, pa- the pasta tasted awful so those are kind what you can infer from the text given okay so this is another example so you have you can we have looked to this uh passage before so what we can understand is that so the title talks about the debate over the gun control in the US so this all the details in here talks about the rules and then the the situation that happened and then what they want to come up with and they have come up with to to control the the selling of guns in the US so what can you infer from that at present guns are readily available to anyone who wants to buy them there are clues in the text that have give that give the information there so you won't be a problem okay right drawing conclusions a conclusion is read a rich by readers after thorough thought has been given to the facts and supporting details that are presented by the author okay So after you read everything, you read through the title, you read the ideas, the facts, and then the supporting details, and then you come up with the conclusion. Okay. So when drawing conclusion, readers go beyond the literal meaning of the text to derive interpretive meanings, but at the same time rely on the facts put forward by the uh, author. Means that you want to interpret something based on what the text is given. But you must rely on the facts given by the author, meaning that whatever you you want to interpret something, but it must be related to what the author is trying to say. Okay, readers should be aware that inferences and conclusions may not be present in each paragraph. Okay, they they it's not always in the paragraph. Sometimes the author might directly give the hidden information, hidden uh, ideas that they want to give you. Sometimes they don't want. So it depends on the author themselves, okay? And then it is left to the discretion of the readers, which is reflected in their ability to think critically, okay? Right? Some examples for you. So Mark and Philip has been walking around the city for an hour. It was a hot, humid afternoon. Sweat was trickling down their faces. Finally, Mark had to carry Philip as the latter became too tired. What can you conclude about Philip? So there are clues in the two, in the text given. So what you can come up with is that he is a young boy. So you are basing your conclusion on the fact 
that was given in the text. For example, the first sentence, Mark and Philip has been walking around the city for an hour. They have been walking in the hot, humid afternoon. Okay, they were sweating like crazy because it's too hot. Then finally, Mark had to carry Philip as the latter becomes too tired. So, imagine that you had to carry Philip. So, if you are carrying Philip, Philip should be someone who is you are able to uh, carry. So he must be someone smaller than Mark. Mark is a grown man, and then Philip should be a young child or boy. Because imagine if you have you have to carry another grown man, it will be very weird. Okay. So, those clues there, and then what the details gave you, what you can come up with the conclusion there. Okay. So for this one as well, Peter waited nervously. He knew that the nurse would call him next. He looked at the models of healthy bones in front of him. Peter hoped that he did not suffer from any broken bones after the fall he had this morning. So where is Peter now? He is at the orthopedic surgeon's office. Orthopedic means. Uh, surgeons who work with bones. So, we, where are the clues that you can find? Okay. So, uh, for example, first one, the nurse talks about the nurse. Whenever you talk about a nurse, it will be somewhere uh, in the hospital, the clinic, or any kind of medical office of officer, officer's office. Then, then, the second clue here is that the models of healthy bones. So whenever you talk about models of healthy bones, you know that the person must be a doctor or someone who is working with uh, human bones. Okay, and then he experienced something that might that cause him to go to the office or the clinic or something. So any broken bones, those things, well, you can draw a conclusion from that. He he is at the orthopedic or bone surgeon's office. Alright, that is how you come up with a conclusion based on the given facts. So this is the same thing, same passage that we have looked before. So, well, have you re- uh, when you read through this, you can come up with the conclusion which is different from the inference. Okay. So what conclusion we can uh, what can the reader draw after the re- reading the paragraph? It will not be possible for everyone to own a gun. In the United States, if stricter laws are put into place, meaning that after you read through everything, because they they mention about the amendment of laws, they are restricting they are restricting people who can buy guns. So at the end, you can uh, understand that they will not allow any people to do this. Okay, to buy the guns, and that's it for the lesson. So making inferences and drawing conclusions are very similar skills. Those two are very similar, but they have their own focuses, correct? So each skill requires the readers to fill in the gaps of information omitted by the author. So the author sometimes omit information because they assume that the readers are already aware of the it. The omitted information may not seem important, or the author may like the readers to contemplate. Maybe they want you to think more on what they have said. Okay? Maybe they think the information is not important enough for them to put it, or they might think that you already know it. So thus, readers have to observe all the facts, arguments, and information given by the author, and incorporate them with their prior knowledge, personal beliefs, experiences. And assumptions when making inferences and drawing conclusions. When you make inferences, when you draw conclusions, every single one will come up dif- a bit different. Okay, it is all based on what you already know and what you believe in, what you have experienced, and the assumptions in your life. Okay, when you relate those things with uh, the given information, that will help you. Uh, come up with a good inference or a conclusion. Okay, so thank you very much for listening to me. My name is Sir Shazwan. It's been uh, good. Thank you very much and have a good day. Bye bye.